The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. On one occasion, Jesus spoke thus. I give praise to you, Father most holy, most Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to the childlike. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except me, except in anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves, for my yoke is easy and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Joining with our consolation ministry and our music ministry here at Curie of Ours, here at this place where Rita served for so many years in, in religious education and our parish council, uh, all of us together offer our prayerful condolences to, to you, Rita's family. And uh, I join with Father Bill Fox and welcoming him here today also. And, and I think that his presence here is really, as I mentioned at the beginning, a beautiful uh, testament to Rita's life. And uh, coming all, hearing about Rita's passing and coming all the way from, Minis, uh, from, uh, from Missouri to, uh, to be with us today. So the homily will be given by Father Bill. But before that, Lisa asked me to read a beautiful eulogy that I'd like to share with you now. It is so difficult to say goodbye to our mom. She was one of a kind. Our mother reader was a beautiful soul inside and out. She was the most positive person in all that she did. She always has good things to say and always saw the good in everyone. She was so generous. She was born on March 26, 1931 in Harlem and then moved to the Bronx. She had a wonderful, loving parents and a younger brother who unfortunately passed away at six years of age. It was a sad time for her family and she grew up as an only child. Luckily, she grew up living near her doting aunts and uncles and was the eldest of her cousins who all looked up to her. She had many friends from her childhood and stayed in connected with them to this day. Mom went to Hunter College, received her two-year degree there and began teaching first in a grade school and a Catholic school for a few years before she married our wonderful father. Some of her students stayed connected with her for many years. She met our father, who she called her Mr. Wonderful, at a church dance. They married on June 29, 1957, in the parish where she taught first grade. All of her little students attended the wedding ceremony. Mom and dad began their life together in Ridgewood, Queens, and they had their first three children, Odelia, Daniel, and George, in three years. Then they moved to Merrick in 1962 to the home they lived on on James Street for all of these years. They had two more daughters, Nancy and Lisa. Five children within seven years. Wow. Not only was she raising five children, a difficult feat, but she also volunteered at Curie of Ars Church, organizing religious education program and teaching for years. Then she went back to Malloy College to finish her bachelor's degree in education and then continued with a master's degree in special education at Adelphi University, all while raising her five children. We don't know how she did it. Our father and grandmother Fanny were a big help. In 1978, she began teaching middle school and high school special education students in a resource room at W.T. Clark High School in East Meadow. All 
hers, all of her students loved her. Exhibit A, Father Bill. That was not part of the speech here. <laughs> she was a positive presence in their lives. She always said this prayer every morning before she went to school. Dear God, please fill me with your peace and love so that I can bring it to everyone that I meet today because so many of my students just need tender, loving care, and everybody needs to be touched with peace and joy. That was the kind of person she was. She cared about everyone. One of those students who kept in touch with her, who is a priest in Missouri, contacted me on Facebook and said he had so many fond memories of her and said she, she, was, she was a great influence in his life. And you'll hear about that in a few moments. He, and he went on to say, he said mass for her this past week. She was a devout Catholic. Our family went to mass here at Cure every Sunday. She was a member of the parish since 1962. Another prayer she always said and instilled in us at, at all times was, O sacred heart of Jesus, I place my trust in thee. To this day, I say that prayer all the time. And that's why I asked uh, Tom, who uh, is our server today, uh, to keep these images up of the Immaculate Heart of Mary that we celebrated last Saturday in the Feast of the Sacred Heart, a beautiful connection. You know, it's no coincidence that, um, that your mom, your grandmother, your mother-in-law uh, passed away uh, during the week of the Feast of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. So, and also, as I mentioned at the wake yesterday, that it's no coincidence that your mom is being buried on this feast day, this beautiful feast of St. Anthony, patron of the lost and found, because as I mentioned at the wake yesterday, we know where she is. She's not lost, but found with your dad, with Dan and her parents and brother and all those who preceded her. So beautiful connections. So Lisa goes on to say, she always said, God is so good to me. She retired from teaching in 1995, and, and she and, and, and uh, our dad enjoyed spending time in the winters there in a condominium in Florida. Her children and grandchildren had so many wonderful vacations visiting them, as we heard at the beginning of the Mass today, and Mom and Dad loved the visit so much. They took all of us to Boca Beach Club, where we all enjoyed the beach, pool, and festivities. Mom had six grandchildren, Justin, Nicolette, Frankie, Juliana, Miranda, and Jake, who loved her so much. She was a wonderful role model and babysitter for all of them for all of these years. She and our father were the fun grandparents teaching them how to bake, swimming in the pool with them, and teaching them how to do watercolor repainting and all other things. Grandma and Papa were everything to their grandchildren. Then they had two great grandchildren, Max and Claire, who she adored as well. After our dad, Dan, passed away in 2016, she continued to be resilient and loved spending time with her family, which was the most important thing to her. She always said that she would live to 100 uh, to be with her grandchildren. Mom was a wonderful person inside and out. She lit up every room and deeply touched every single soul that she met. She was healthy and strong up until her 93rd birthday only 10 weeks before she left us. It's hard to believe that we will not see her again. But we are happy that she is no longer suffering and can be with our father Dan, her loving husband, her Mr. Wonderful, on what have been, would have been their 67th wedding anniversary on June 29th. We will miss her, but we, should, we will know that she is enjoying herself in heaven with dad, her family and friends, and are there with her. Amen. So beautiful reflection written by uh, Lisa to, uh, to celebrate Rita's life. And now I invite Father Bill to offer the homily. Thank you, Father. I will tell you a little secret before I get started. Preaching at a funeral is a lot easier when the person we're celebrating is holy and interesting. Those usually go together. 
And thanks be to God, Mrs. Florenza made it very easy today. <laughs> and I'm going to have trouble calling her Rita. Because I only ever knew her as was Mrs. Florenza. You know, my sisters and brothers, you know, when I was a student of hers, when any of her students wanted to sit at her desk chair, which was invariably the most comfortable looking chair in the room, <laughs> she would say, no, no, no. I worked hard to get my master's to be able to sit in that chair. When you earn your master's degree, you can come back and sit in my chair. And sadly, I, she had retired by the time I earned my master's degrees. So I could never sit in this chair. So Mrs. Rolanza, this is going to have to do. And I trust <laughs> that's going to be big enough. And again, Odelia, Liz, George, Nancy, Liz. I said that twice. <laughs> Frank. And again, uh, uh, Father, Father Frank has already expressed his, his condolences and the condolences of the parish community. And I want to con- express my own condolences, that of the Fox family. Uh, we're half Italian, that's why I preach with one hand. But also for... All of us alumni of W. Tresper Clark, especially those who uh, were helped by her, were taught by her, were encouraged by her uh, as, uh, as our teacher, thank you for sharing her love with us. Because she did love. She loved all of us differently to be certain. But definitively, she loved us, and she loved you. I'm skipping over parts of my homily that we've already addressed in the eulogy and already addressed uh, in the comments that the, the, the children, the grandparents, the grandchildren made. But I will say this. Mrs. Valenza, I keep pulling over that, Rita was a woman of tremendous faith and love, and those things go together too. As we heard, sisters and brothers, she had this great devotion to the Mass, to actively and participating in the sacrifice of the Mass, learning her Lord in the Eucharistic presence, in the Eucharistic liturgy, in reception of Holy Communion. Her great devotion of praying the prayer to St. Francis, begging God, begging God to make her an instrument of his peace, loving through suffering, as we see not only in her devotion to the sacred heart of Jesus and how fitting, sisters and brothers, (laughs) how fitting that she passed in the early hours of that great solemnity this year of the Sacred Heart, and indeed her devotion to her namesake, St. Rita of Cascia, who suffered and loved at the same time as a mother, as a widow, as a wife, and then as a religious sister. And St. Anthony, certainly, it's easy to forget that St. Anthony, in his earthly ministry, was a great teacher. And how fitting was that she leaned on the example and the intercession of St. Anthony to be a great teacher. As we saw, as we just heard in her service in the religious education program here, in her service on the city council, even all her creativity, huh? all her baking, all her painting, She really invested a lot of time in her her baking. All the friends she made at Merrick Senior Center, huh? All that love. And you know, sisters and brothers, I'm sure she told you that. All that love she learned from Jesus Christ. And as we remember Rita, 
as we change our relationship with Rita. We use this as an opportunity to let Jesus teach us how to love. My sisters and brothers, when I, last Friday when I learned about Rita's passing, I pulled out my yearbook from 1984. And I shared some of this with you last night, huh? 40 years ago yesterday, she signed my yearbook. I won't give you the entire narrative, but she wrote in the end, I am so happy that I played some small part in your education. May God bless you and guide you always. And thank you, Rita, for your prayers these 40 years later, huh? And how we hear that echo in that prayer we heard that she prayed every day before class. And I'm going to, I'm going to recite this prayer again. As she prayed, dear God, please fill me with your peace and love so that I can bring it to everyone that I meet today because so many of my students just need tender, loving care, and everyone needs to be touched with your peace and your love. Mrs. Fulenza recognized that in teaching, she wasn't only serving her students, but she was learning from her students. She was learning ways to love from her students as well as she could teach them how to love. Because although God has hidden these things from the wise and the learned, he has revealed them to the childlike. Rita knew, Rita knows that if we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Oh, sisters and brothers, in a couple of minutes, when Father Frank starts the Eucharistic prayer, he's going to pray that for the faithful, that's all of us, huh? For the faithful, life is changed, not ended. And so our relationship with mom, grandma, Rita, Mrs. Forlenza, is changed, not ended. And we are confident, confident, sisters and brothers, that insofar as she is able, she is still praying for us. And we're not off the hook because we are called to still pray for her. My sisters and brothers, we have still a lot to learn from this great teacher. Praise be Jesus Christ, now and forever.